Welcome back to the Bloomwell Farm. We are happy to have you along. If you are new here and you enjoy homesteading, DIY, and a natural home, please go ahead and hit subscribe, follow along. We'd love to have you on this journey with us. And today we are back in the kitchen garden. Uh, my last video, I was just doing a cleanup and getting things ready for the preseason. And uh, I was still out here working when my husband got home last night. And so we were walking through the garden talking and I was sharing some ideas that I had for the future. And he looked at me and he said, do you wanna do that tomorrow? And I said, sure. So it's gonna be a busy day here on the farm. This was not planned. And so uh, bear with us because we just are scrambling to, to do this. Um, but it just made so much sense. In my last video, I talked about the transitioning in my career and how I have to do things creatively and frugally. And this fits right into that because I've already purchased the mulch for this garden a couple weeks ago. And so once I put that down, I really can't make any changes. So uh, we're gonna do it now because it just makes good sense to do it now. And so stay tuned for our kitchen garden update. Here we are guys, we are standing smack dab in the middle of the kitchen garden and I just want to take a moment or two to point out a few things so as we're working on them you can see what we're concentrating on, what we're changing. Now in these upper squares that are closer to the house, I have two beds and one bed in each area and they are three feet across and five feet long. And I only have one on each side and there is the pathway that we use to go back and forth to the patio and I'm thinking about adding two beds to this area on each side so that I have more like at, at the other end there are two beds and then I use this back area uh, to plant herbs and flowers and whatever I have some things to put in there like on the other side you can see I have a bench sitting there and I have a tub a planter that goes in that corner so I have two on this end and I kind of wanted to expand. Now last year we added that big long bed and I had tomatoes there last year except they were a little crowded. They didn't do as well. And if you've seen um, the previous video, I put the herbs in there for this year and I still have a couple more herbs to dig out and divide up and share with everyone. So that's kind of just the look of everything and now I'm just going to gather some tools I have some reclaimed wood and some tarps tarps are awesome tools and now I'm just going to start clearing the area and get ready for work So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and rake up all the mulch in the entire garden. It is old and I'm not sure if I want to reuse it as the base or use it somewhere else, um, but in order for us to get our work done, I'm certainly going to just move it and I'm going to put it on a tarp. Like I said, tarps are just amazing things to have um, for hauling leaves, twigs, you get them full and then you just drag them wherever you want. I use them for putting soil on and, and like this is mulch. Just a great tool to have. Now that it has gotten really warm outside, it doesn't take long when you're moving and the sun was out today, so I got warm really fast, which caused me to do a wardrobe change. And now I'm just going to dig out all those strawberries and I have an empty strawberry jar, so I'm gonna put them 
in the strawberry jar so I can save them because I think I'm going to transplant them out into another garden because like I said they really took over the sides of these beds and went creeping all over and I had a hard time containing them so I don't think I'm going to keep them up here any longer but that's what the goal is is to just dig them out and get them ready to transplant. Guys, I have a great helper and he is so very talented at building things and we are using this reclaimed deck boarding and to make these raised beds. Again, these are going to be the same size, the three by five. These turned out great and I like the rustic look of them and because they're deck boards, they kind of last a little longer. Now, um, remember I talked about that first raised bed up there and how the soil was not great in it and I wasn't sure what I was going to do and I explained later um, I actually had to cut it out of this clip because uh, it's so blurry but um, the ground does a downhill slope in this area and so I really needed to fill it in a little bit so it worked out really great I could use that soil that I'm not going to be using for the bed and I kind of distributed that around and kind of softened that slope and I'll explain more about that later. Now it's time to lay down some weed barrier and it's so helpful to have weed barrier on this was also a supply that we had on hand. We have the deck boards that are given to us by our friends and um, this weed barrier we had um, my husband actually got it last year and he'd actually found it alongside the road and we brought it home and now I'm using it for this area. Um, it's just really great when you don't have to pull a lot of weeds and maintain that part. You know, the mulch does a good job of keeping some of the weeds down but this does even better because really nobody wants to spend a great deal of time weeding, right? So there was a slope on the other side, so I removed that bed as well. And I had some chives and some oregano still hanging around, and I wanted to pull out all that oregano just to make sure that uh, it wasn't going to come back. And I'm actually putting another bed in that area as well. We we're actually adding three beds to this garden. So I'm uh, gonna go ahead and just move that soil around, chop it up a little bit, and help distribute that soil in that area to so just kind of soften that slope. Um, as I explained, we kind of have to keep the slope because this is right up against our house. So uh, just soften it a little bit and get ready to lay the plastic here as well. And so we're all set to do that. Now it's just time to get out that weed barrier and start putting that in place for this side. Okay guys, and now it's time for the math. And maybe I overthunk this, overthought, overthunk, how do you say that? 
let me know in the comments how do you say that anyway um because i'm adding two beds now to this area that only had one this top half the garden and i say that because the garden is divided in half there's the part up by the house and then there's the part after the pathway and they are not the same size last year i actually widened the paths so that my wagon and my wheelbarrow fit down them and they're not the same size so getting the beds the same at both ends of the garden so they kind of look the same um, getting them centered where there's room for me to walk around and weed comfortably also and at the other end also remember that I plant things on that end so um, sometimes I plant them up by the house too so we just went around and took measurements and figured out what was the closest to them being equal at both ends even though both ends of the garden are not the same size well this was kind of the end of day one we did a lot of cleanup and got the beds constructed and know where they're going to be and they are ready for soil now to be put in them and speaking of soil i did have two cubic yards delivered and this is some great soil this is a blend of topsoil organic compost and some sand so this is a great growing mix so i'm certain we've used it before it will be great for our plants now the next morning here we are we're off to a pretty chilly start but excited to keep working what i'm doing is i'm actually moving the rocks and the bed out of the way so i can get up to the first bed to put soil in there and I'm just going to rake it all down and level it off so I get an idea of how much more I need to bring per box what it's going to take to fill these raised beds so I've got that all evened out and now it's just a matter of hauling for a lot more Okay guys, this is where I try to explain it, that the natural slope away from our house is important. We don't want water going into our basement, especially Michigan. And um, however, the slope leaves the beds uneven and I wanted them leveled a little bit more. Um, not perfect, it didn't have to be perfect, but I did want them a little bit more on the level side. So what I'm doing is I'm taking up the weed barrier and I'm taking a look to see what I can do to make this a little more on the level side and uh, without reconstructing the whole garden. So what I've done is I've gotten some bricks and I'm just kind of figuring out how much of a difference there is for it to be a little more level and I'm just going to stick the bricks right under there. That did a great job of leveling it. It's really level now and I did it under there so that the plastic would kind of help the soil stay inside the bed, but we did add a little more trim to it. I just took some pallet boards, we cut them down and screwed them in where there's gaps. Now once the soil is in there, you won't see them at all. Now I'm just going to move over to the other side, move the bed out of the way, and that's right, haul some more soil. Boy, I am certainly getting a great workout today and getting that soil put in the beds.
it's time to start distributing the mulch. We have all the beds full and we put down weed barrier even at the other end of the garden as well. So now we're going to do mulch for all the garden and um, this was just the plan to begin with was to mulch the garden but now you see that it was a great time to add these three extra beds because once this mulch is down you don't have to do all that all over again and we really did need new weed barrier too so it worked out really really well I'm gonna have lots of extra space and the mulch is going to look good now I am using a brown mulch I really like the brown in contrast with the wood and the stone what is your favorite color mulch let me know down below and what color would you use in your garden so it's just continuing raking I love this little shove rake it's probably my favorite tool on the farm I use it just about everywhere I use it to clean out the chicken coop we use pine shavings in there I use it to as you've seen earlier in the video I use it to move soil around uh, rake the soil rake the mulch I use it in all of my gardens and of course you know it's small so it's easy to get around the plants and the shrubs and it's actually called a shrub rake um, so it's my favorite tool it's so light and easy to use now we're just going to continue with spreading that mulch into all sections of the garden and we will be just about finished There you have it friends, our kitchen garden update. We really enjoyed this project. It was a spur of the moment project, but we did it very frugally. The only cost was the mulch, which we had already purchased. Everything else was reused and reclaimed, and it looks great. Thanks so much for coming along, guys. Please give this video a like and a subscribe, and we'll see you soon. Be blessed and be safe.